Catherine Walters from The Knitted Raven here again. Sorry it's taken me so long to post, folks. You know, life is what happens while we're all making plans. Anyway, following the first video on how to make a wire wrapped loop, I had some comments left, people asking for how to make a wire wrapped loop on top of a bead. So I thought that would make a nice wire wrapped loop part two video. So that's what we're going to do today. You will need for this video two beads that are drilled from top to bottom. I've got a couple of Howlite beads there. You will need two head pins. Those are copper head pins that I have made, but any kind of head pin um, will do. You could, it could be copper, it could be silver. As long as the metal's soft for when you're starting out, and copper is a nice cheap way to practice, so I'm all for the copper head pins. You will also need some chain nose pliers. You will need some round nose pliers. You will need some um, cutters and cutters that are geared for the thickness of your wire. Now, these are 20 gauge head pins. These cutters are geared for 18 gauge wire, so I'm good to go. You will also want a little bit of sandpaper. This is fine wet sandpaper, automotive sandpaper that I buy from my local Canadian tire store. And this is a pro polish pad, though certainly steel wool or any commercial jewelry cloth will do. That's more for the finishing. So, first thing we always do is we clean our wire. This also helps straighten out any of the kinks and makes it easier for us to do what we need to do. So they're pretty straight. Now, the key to making drop earrings that uh, you're actually going to be happy with is to make sure that you choose head pins that have a similar size ball on the bottom. I make my own head pins so um, there's often a lot of variation in the sizes so I always pick through them to make sure that they match. The other thing you want to try and look for is two beads that are exactly the same size. Now I don't know if you're going to be able to tell but mine aren't actually quite the same size. And that happens a lot. When you buy um, commercially made beads, there can be a few millimeters in the difference of the diameter. And of course, that's going to make a difference in terms of how long your drop ends up being. But there are ways to fan dangle that, especially with ear wire, so you end up with a set of earrings that hang um, um, evenly. But that'll be in another video. Today we're going to work on getting our wire wrapped loops squarely planted on top of those beads. So I'll move that out of the way. So you start with something like this. You've got your bead threaded onto your head pin and you grab your chain nose pliers. Now I like to grab pretty close to the bead and pretty close to the end of the um, pliers. Why? Because wherever you put that bend um, you will have a, a straight section of wire protruding out of the bead that you will ultimately have to wrap around. So if you only like to wrap once or twice, you probably need to grab it here. If you don't mind wrapping three or four times, you can grab it a little bit further in. The choice is entirely yours. So I'm going to grab mine there. And I'm going to get my handy Sharpie marker and place a tiny little mark. You probably can't see that, but I can. I've placed a tiny little mark where I've grabbed that wire. And that'll help me make sure that I grab it in exactly the same place with the next bead. So first thing you do is you push away with your thumb to get that nice 90 degree bend. I think I need to push a little more. So you should end up with something that looks like this look familiar? It should. Now obviously you don't need as much space here as, um, or you don't need a, a head pin as long for a single wrap or something, but again I left the tails long. I always leave the tails long. Um, a, it gives me more options when I go to use them, and for our purposes here it will make the demonstration a little bit easier. So Go ahead and do step two, which is pull the um, tail across over your pliers, then holding your work, reposition your pliers, 
and continue wrapping right past until you have something that looks like this. Now, if you will remember from my earlier video, the key to a wire wrapped loop that's neat is to make sure that this loop is square over the piece that's protruding from the bead or sticking downwards. So put your pliers back in and give that a little tweak. Now, this is not a precise science by any stretch of the imagination. You keep fandangling it very gently And now I'll push it back just a little bit. There you go. And now you do what we did in the other video. You grab the loop in your chain nose pliers and you start to wrap. Your first wrap needs to be as tightly seated under that loop as you can get it. And mine certainly is. Now you'll notice what I'm doing with my thumbnail as I move along. That works because this is copper. And I like to tuck my wraps in as I go. So that's a pretty neat wrap and it's pretty square over. Now you'll notice that this bead is not drilled entirely evenly. So if you end up with something that looks a little bit lopsided, you can still fandangle it ever so gently once you're done. But you'll learn to be more finicky over time with what you choose for your beads because there can be a lot of variation. So here we have a wire wrapped loop on top of a bead. And now we'll do it again once more for good measure. Grabbing in exactly the same place on the pliers, pushing down. That's how every wire wrapped loop starts. You may notice I actually have a spot marked on my um, pliers there. That's so I make the same size loop all the time. The Sharpie marker is your friend and if you need to change where the mark is, the Pro Polish pad will take that mark right out. So. No worries about having to be committed long term to any mark on your tools. And here we are again. Uh, I think I can make that a bit neater. So tucking it back in again for just a second and doing that and coming down and coming in. Uh, now I need to regain my bend. All right, this one isn't as perfect. But sometimes when it's not perfect, you can still make it work. First thing I need to do is go in and push it down around the mandrel again, and that'll help straighten it up a little bit. And then come in and wrap, 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 and more wrap. And then you come in and you cut it, cut the end, and you tuck the end in. Now, if it's not quite perfect, this is where I go back in and I give it a little tweak. And now you've got another wire wrapped loop. Now, when you're making earrings, you need to pay really close attention to your wire wrapped loops, how many wraps you make in order for them to come out the same length. To be truthful with you, I didn't pay such close attention, but I still managed to get fairly close. Check this out. Now, the larger bead is on the right of the screen, so you can see it's slightly longer. But that's okay. Once we get to the se section or the tutorial on ear wires, I'll show you how to make subtle adjustments to your ear wires so that these will hang evenly. Because there's no point in buying a string of beads that you end up not using half of it. That's just not good economical sense. Anyway, now it's time to go back in with your sandpaper and I guarantee you, wherever you have grabbed that wire with your pliers, you are going to have flea bites. So go on in with your water paper and make a few passes. 
on both sides because there will be tool marks on both sides and it really helps to work on a bend like I folded it over there and the edge of the uh, the folded edge makes a nice cushion to uh, work on and then sometimes I'll even fold it one more time and give the top edges a little buff because I guarantee you there will be flea bites there and there's nothing worse than having made a really nice pair of earrings and you're taking a a, a promo shot with your cell phone so you can post it on your Etsy shop or or even just on social media to say look what I made and in your close-up shot all the tool marks show up been there done that so once you've done that give it a little polish with your pro polish pad supporting the copper so when I'm pushing, I'm supporting the back of it with my um, with my finger. That way, I don't distort it. And now it's nice and shiny. And now we're going to just buff up the end of that head pin a bit. Pro polish pads do a marvelous job of bringing out the shine in pretty much everything. And the last thing I do is I give it a little pinch to flatten the work. But there you have it, folks. That's a wire wrapped loop squared up over a bead. I hope this uh, helps you out and uh, stick around for wire wrapped loop part three because there's lots of things you can do with wire wrapped loops. Anyway, Catherine Walters signing off from The Knitted Raven. You have yourselves a great day.